Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Garden Air. My name is Natalie, and today we are talking about the Tillandsia xerographica. Tillandsia xerographica is an air plant and likely the largest one. These guys originate from like South Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, but they are considered endangered in the area. So a lot of times you can find them grown from seed. I keep my xerographica in a small dish in my garden window that faces southeast. It gets dappled sunlight all day long thanks to my two maple trees out here. This air plant can handle pretty bright light. In fact, it loves bright light. It's one of the only air plants that can handle it almost direct as long as it's not too scorching hot. So a bright window is going to be ideal for this air plant. Check the color of your xerographica. If it's more silver, it may require a little bit more light. Tillandsia xerographica is just such a cool air plant. One, because of its huge size, but two, because of its beautiful bluish green curly leaves. It has this beautiful, unique shape. A lot of times they're considered adorable and they are pretty easy to grow, but you can kill your xerographica if you're not careful. You're not going to want to place it where you're going to easily neglect and forget it. It does need to be watered every week, if not every other week, depending on the environment of your home. I use a large bowl when I water my Tillandsia and once a month I do give it some fertilizer and I just use a liquid fertilizer that's meant for orchids and I'll put maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon in this bowl of water or I'll use a foliar feed, which I get from repotme.com. And this is the Feed Me Mist. And you can just spritz it all over the leaves and let it sit and dry. And it will feed it foliar. Foliarly? <laughs> it will feed it through the leaves. So I added my liquid fertilizer. Just going to stir it through. And then let's get this big guy in here. So I try to lift it from the bottom of the plant and I'll show you its bottom. If you flip it over, there's the body of the plant and you can grab it through here. Now the this Tillandsia is actually a kind of bromeliad. So you might see a very similar resemblance to a lot of your bromeliads in shape and how it looked down here. It doesn't look okay. So I just let it sit here and I'll like spoon water all over the leaves. Make sure it gets well soaked and saturated. And you'll notice a little change of color as you soak it. This is fine. And I find that making sure all of your tips get well soaked because your tips will dry out. Like here's a dried out one here because we have our heat on, it's winter time. Your tips will be the first things to react to a dry environment. So make sure all of your tips get down into the water and really get a good soak. Also, the type of water you use um, is very important. These guys are very sensitive to um, things in the water. So if you have like city water that's heavily chlorinated or fluorinated or anything like that, you can either feed it rainwater, you can buy distilled, or I don't usually prefer distilled water, but you can get like reverse osmosis and different things like that. You can use distilled water. Um, it's, it's, it's just that it's empty of nutrients and I, I don't personally use it. Um, and you can use your tap water, just make sure you sit it out for a few hours and let all of the the chemicals that are in the water kind of like drop to the bottom of the water and then you can use the upper part only or you could just mist it with it something like that try to keep any hard chemicals 
or um, you know, like even if you have a lot of calcium in the water, try to keep that off the plant as much as possible. These guys are sensitive to things like that. And I have known Tillandsia xerographicas to die after one simple watering with hard water. So do be careful. Um, in the winter, you can even like melt snow for some, for some pure water that way. Just make sure it's room temperature before you decide to start soaking the, the plant in it. Okay, so I'm going to let this guy sit now. I usually only sit it for about 15 minutes. I don't give it hours on end, anything like that. It's about 15 minutes. Now you wanna determine how long to soak it by how dry your, your home or your environment is. If it is very dry, you can give it a little, a longer soak, or you can just soak it more often, maybe once a week, twice a week, whatever you find is going to be necessary for your plant and your environment. Um, usually every two weeks during the summer is good for me, and then I pick it up maybe weekly during the winter because we do um, heat our home with wood and it does get dry. So I shake it all off. You really wanna get all the excess water out of your plant because it is going to be sitting around your house. You don't want water down in all of these tight crevices um, causing rot. So you're, I usually just set it on a towel, turn it upside down for a few minutes, let water kind of like escape. Airflow is going to be very important around this plant. Make sure it's not in a stuffy room. Make sure it's in a nice open area with a lot of space. A room with a fan is ideal. Um, I'm going to be putting, I'm going to be growing this on that branch that I showed you in the first clip in the sunroom um, with my orchids during the, the better times of the year when I don't have heat on. It'll be on that branch, but it'll be in my garden window during the winter when my house is just extra dry because I can't have it um, in rooms that have um, intense heat going. So I don't want it drying out. So I'm just going to keep it in the window until spring and then I'll move it into the sunroom. So you might find that these guys are a little bit of a slow grower. Um, mine actually has not been incredibly slow. I bought it, when I bought it, it really just kind of like fit in the palm of my hand. And I've had it for maybe, I don't know. I think I've had it about three years and um, it doesn't stay, like the whole thing would stay in the palm of my hand. All of the little curly leaves would, they were just this cute little ball. And it's grown quite a bit in three years. It's not a massive grower. You're not going to be like, holy holy cow, this thing is getting huge so fast. It will take its time. Um, but they definitely are worth it. I think the more light you give it, the faster it's going to put on some growth. So again, I really can't stress enough. These guys do like sunlight. Um, just be careful that you don't burn the the leaves it does have that nice covering it is a little bit protected and it does handle bright light well just watch out for that direct hot sunlight because you know how it just scorches leaves and these guys don't need any help in the scorching department if your environment is already dry so keep your environment in mind when you decide how much light to give it if you don't have enough light in your home and everything is kind of dim, just give it a nice simple grow light and you can even place the grow light um, a little bit farther away from it so that doesn't burn. I have had burned leaves on some of my orchids due to grow lights. So even with grow lights, you need to be careful with how close you get it to your plant. So that is pretty much it as far as taking care of the Tillandsia xerographica. I find them to be quite easy. Um, as long as you don't forget about it, just because it's an air plant, it doesn't mean it doesn't require care, water, and basic needs of any plant. So with all of that said, I hope you found this video helpful and that you give the Tillandsia xerographica a try. They are so unique and so cool and you can place them pretty much anywhere in the home. 
I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already and feel free to check out my website where I make all botanical products and herbalism. It's nw-herbals.com and also my nonprofit organization, Sacred Tree. Bye guys.